about this rivalry? How much do you know about it? You have the shirt on there. Uh, how familiar are you with it? I just know how uh, how heated the rivalry is, and that it's the it's the it's the rivalry that feels to me like since I've been in the NFL for the past 14 years, like this is the one that feels most like the college rivalries that you, and that's pretty special. I mean, those are always always games in college that you know are are legendary games. They play those they play those clips from around you know if 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 you're thinking Ole Miss Mississippi, they play those clips over and over and over again. And what's the same thing here, like. You make plays in this game, um, they're going to be shown for a long time. So know how much this rivalry means. Seen this, seen so many plays from this game. You know the highlights of the Cowboys or the highlights from the Eagles being played a bunch as I grew up as well. Nick, you're pretty in tune with just kind of the passion and the emotion of this city and how much of a football town this is. Are you sensing that even from the players as well this week? Just how big this game is. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely feel it. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times I, since I've been here, um, you know, when I have an interaction with a fan, it's like, hey, beat Dallas. You know, and I, I think that's really cool. I think that's awesome. So um, I really love the fact that I'm, in the, I'm, I'm able to partake in this rivalry, and it, it means a lot to the city. It means a lot to our team, and it means a lot to this building. And you're going to wear that all week? Uh, yeah, I got another shirt that I got too. Uh, but it's it's awesome. I, again, these shirts like I still have my Mount Union John Carroll shirts from 2003. I love wearing those around, and and, and so it feels the same way. And um, just uh, yeah, I'll be wearing this all week. Uh, my kids got it. My wife has one, and uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be wearing them. Hey, Nick, last time we talked to you, you hadn't yet uh, been with the players yet. Uh, how have they responded after the first loss, and are you getting the level of focus you want from them? Yeah, um, you know it would the the corrections were made it, you know you had to wait an extra because we're playing a Monday night game and the way we did our schedule this week you had to sit with it for one more day everyone had to sit with that loss before we made the corrections for one more day but it was the same thing that you, you talk about after and it felt the same way as for the players too like my 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 message was the same like we make our corrections from this we get better from this and then we move on and um and that's that's the message that I had. That's what I felt that them doing. And so um, it's a long season. It's it's such a long season. You get held up on a on a loss for too long, uh, you're not going to be able to respond to the the next game. But everybody's mindset's got to be, hey, how do we make the mistake? How do we fix the mistakes? How do we move on? And how do we have get that that confidence back that we we started with last week? And I think that's what, what practice is for, and um, the preparation is for. Do you believe really planning together this week? Uh, in exact Ertz's case, did you think on having Ertz before Monday, or are you planning to not have him? Everything's got to be planned as if he's. You, know, you got to have. You have to have double plans out there, and so. Um, without getting too much into that, it's just everything has to be double planned. You have to back it up of of what you want to have in. If do you want to be in 12 personnel? Do you want to be in 11 personnel? Um, and so you just have to back up everything. And and so that just means a little bit more uh, preparation on some of the wide out spots, maybe on Jack Stoll also. Um, but it's, that's just the way it, that's just the way it goes in these scenarios. And and these happen all year, right? There's a guy that yeah, he's questionable. He's questionable, and you got to do the same thing. This this isn't new to us. This is just something that we've that we've had to do, and this is the nature of this business in the NFL. Do you believe in bulletin board material? And that being the case, do you think your picture's going to go to the Dallas line? Hey, Obviously, you don't even care because right. you're wearing a shirt. But I don't know if it's really real bulletin. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna have this the picture of this shirt up on there, and that's fine. I, this is about a great rivalry, and um, that means a lot to this city. That means a lot to our building, and you know, it, it's a division game. And so I, and with the rivalry and it being a division game, I don't know if anyone need our our side, their side needs any more bulletin board material, or if it's even gonna help because we know how how big the rivalry is and how much it means to both both sides. I've been asked about replacing uh, BG on the field and in terms of leadership. What about the energy? Uh, who's who's gonna be your energy guy now? Um, it's never just one person that's like, hey, he's in, he's out, you're in. Right, it's, it's especially with a person like like BG. It's 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 by committee. It's going to be by committee in practice, or pardon me, in on the field and in, in, in the play. And it's going to be by committee um, 
by you know by energy as well so it's just going to take it's going to take everybody you just it's going to take a little more from the coaches it's going to take a little bit you know from from coach rocker from coach wash from coach gannon it's going to take a little more from fletch it's going to take a little more from uh sweaty all right so it's 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 just it's a by committee thing um and so, but you know, it's just a guy you're gonna you're gonna always miss. He's just a great. You guys know him. He's a great person to just be around every single day. He's always got a smile on his face. He's always got great energy. So there's no doubt we'll, we'll miss him. But look forward to the challenge of everybody else stepping up and um, with without him here. Hey, you hey, you've lost Brandon Brooks as well on short-term IR. Landon Dickerson, really tough spot for him coming in first week back at practice. Have you thought about? Is he going to be the starter this week, or is Nate Herbeck going to be involved, or are you not at that point yet? Well, yeah, I mean, you saw what we did last week. It's, it's, you know, it's going to be Landon. And, um, but, you know, Nate's got to be ready just like he would be um, like he was last week. So um, to be ready to go in if anything else, if anything else happens. And so it was a good learning experience for Landon. I know he, he, uh, he's, he made the corrections. Uh, he's looking forward to getting out there and practicing today to get better. Yeah, he's he's gritty. He's tough, and uh, you know we love we love that on this team. We love those guys that are are gritty and tough, and they and they just do what they got to do to get their job done. So uh, that's what I have felt out of him so far. There's no doubt that you know you you think about Jack, and I think I think with Zach and with Dallas, you're like, oh, Jack's just a you know a blocker and. And, and that's part of his role, but he, you're right. He, he can catch the football. He runs good routes. He's technically sound. Um, I, I think that I'm really pleased that we have him on this team, and great job to our staff, our, our, our scouting staff, of finding that undrafted free agent that, that's made the team. It's, that's, that's an awesome thing. So, um, yeah, we, we uh, got high hopes for Jack, and uh, we're, we're happy with the way he's been playing his role so far. What, what's, a, what's the toughest thing for, like, a rookie wide receiver like Devontae Smith, you know, with the ups and downs of the season, which I, I guess we kind of saw a little bit of the first two games? It's just a different game. And so, you know, there's going to be some games where it's it's tight, it's tight coverage, and you just got to get those those reps of catching the ball in, in tight coverage. And and I'm not sure, I don't, I'm not saying that he had any any drops there. It's just different than what he's experienced in, in the past. And and to be honest with you though, the the SEC is the closest thing to the NFL um, for a receiver because the coverage is tight in the SEC. So he's not making a completely different – it's not completely different. Like, I don't want to name conferences, but SEC is the closest thing you can get to to the NFL when we look at receivers, when we look at corners. We always think about that. Um, so, But it's just, the, it's just that everything's more contested. Everything's a little tighter in and out of the break. Everything's contested at the, at the catch point a little bit more. And so those are the things you just got to get used to. And we try our best to simulate that in practice. And uh, he'll get used to that and, and, um, and, and keep working on his game. The offensive line starters are going to average about 50 pounds more than their D-line starters per guy. Uh, obviously, it matters if they're good or not. But sure. uh, do, do you look at something as basic as that and sort of game plan, game plan towards it? Sure, we're always we're always thinking about every matchup that we're gonna we're gonna get in a game. Whether it's a you know it, it could be a, the size of a, a tight end versus a defensive end and the strength, or the size of an offensive line defensive line, or the speed of a running back and a linebacker. I mean, so we're looking at those things all the time, um, and it's everything is taken account when game plan. And again, I've said here in the past that it's always about the players first, and that's you know what you're saying is exactly right. It's player versus player, so it's players, it's matchups, and then it's play. And so that's that's always taken into account. Yeah, as you see comparison kind of translate to the offensive and defensive line when it comes to like you know a guy like Landon. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's fair. I mean, I got, I, you know, there's there's no secret. There's so many good players there in the SEC, and that's that's always the one. I, I always think of it a little bit more, um, in on the on the skill side, just because of the style of play. Um, but I, I think that's fair what you're saying. But I, I've just, I guess I've just always thought about wide receivers, uh, DBs, uh, when I'm evaluating those two positions. How, how does Jalen take to uh, when mistakes are pointed out on film? Yeah, I think he's very coachable. Very, very coachable. Um, and as a matter of fact, I don't think that's just fair. I think this whole team's very coachable. And I think when you're, when you're making corrections on film, as long as you're – as long as a coach, this is my job as a coach, is to, there's a standard, 
right? There's a standard that is set on each play. There's a, the job description on each play, we feel as coaches are very defined. Hey, here's your job description on this play and here's the standard. And we show them what that looks like. And we hold everybody accountable to that standard. And so as long as it's everybody's getting corrected, I, my experiences with guys is everybody's coach, a lot, everybody's really coachable when the standard is set and then you hold the guys to that standard. And when the standard's set and that, that standard is met, you get excited about it and celebrate it. So that's our style and, and Jalen's no different than the guys on our team. To follow up when I asked you after the game about holding the ball too long, because you watched in the tape where there's certain third down passes where you felt like you had to rip it. Uh, again, he just made so many plays with his with his legs when things kind of when there was a thing that broke down here or there. Um, I still didn't feel that. I mean, there's there's a there's one that we talked about. We wanted him to set up a little bit earlier, Jeff. Um, that we wanted his setup point to be a little earlier on a movement. But as far as holding it, I didn't I didn't feel that. Again, watching it, that was one of the one of the deep balls to to Devonte. Hey, 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 what's the the main takeaway? I just one one thing is that we work so like guys just the the amount of time before we get into game planning Dallas the amount of time that I spend self correcting is is a lot and I can only say I mean you you just gotta believe me I spend a lot of time self evaluating myself before I even do anything with the team so. Um, <laughs> the amount of time I beat myself up on calls and, and I mean, I drug myself through the mud pretty good this week and, uh, and, and for, you know, Hey, I should have, I mean, there's plays that didn't work. And, but what I said to myself coming off of that, like when I, cause at some point you got to switch, you got to switch your mode and be like, no, I'm here because I'm a good coach and I'm ready to go. And I'm going to get our guys in the best position to beat Dallas. I could possibly go. And there's gotta be a switch that flips. And so what helped me this week is that just the preparation, like, hey, trust your preparation. Trust what you did all week. Trust the, the seven hours you spent on third down um, that, you're, that you want to make that call. The other seven hours on red zone that you made educated decisions here. Trust that process. Trust your process. Stick to your gut. Trust your process. Be ready to adjust. And that's just, again, when you – and get better from the th mistakes that you made. And so that's been my message to myself of, and, and, and then with the staff, just continue to use the guys on this staff that have play calling experience and that are good at what they do. I mean, I'd look at Jim Bob, he's coming out right now. He's, he's got play calling experience. Shane has playing calling experience. Kevin has play calling experience. Jason has play calling experience. Stout has given, you know, has, has good experience uh, there. Brian Johnson has play call experience. I mean, my goodness, I got great guys at my dis dis disposal to help me make, uh, make me, to make good decisions. And so my thought is there is again, trust your process of what I've went through and what this staff has went through all week. And then Lean on, lean on guys that have had good experience playing calling plays in this league. Two more guys, two more. As far as that self-correction, from your perspective, you may have heard it, you may not have heard it, but attacking the middle of the field. Do you make notes like, I got to get to this, I, I got to put this on film, or, or how do you approach You that? always self-scout yourself, and you don't ever want to be predictable to the defense. Um, again, sometimes it's like, hey, what are they giving you? What are your players good at? You know, it's, it's more about what they're giving you. I mean, it's both and, but sometimes the middle of the field is not there for you to take. So um, I don't get too caught up in that. But, yes, you're always self-scouting yourself, yourself. It's like hitting a play in the middle is, is very similar to the, the, the scenario of, Hey, every time I'm strong in the gun, I run this. You want to, you want to get, you want to correct that so that the defense doesn't have a tell on you, and that's every phase of the game. Would you like, to see, see, would you like to see Jalen run a little bit less? So I mean, you need you guys are rushing right now, and, and you talk about, you know, he's trying to get a feel for things. Or do you just I, I really believe that he's going through his reads and making his reads. If something breaks down up front, he runs, or he, you know, he had a scramble play to Devonte that he threw it. I know we we gained seven yards on that um so i don't feel like i would feel that way if i felt like he was unnecessarily leaving the pocket or and just doesn't have to have something break down it's also the play wasn't there right like in the case of him and uh, dallas in the atlanta game um on the touchdown the play wasn't there 
he made something happen because he had to. And so I'm good with the way how he's playing playing game right now because I don't believe he's leaving the pocket early. Um, he's leaving the pocket out of necessity. Zach, let me ask answer your question. In, in Sweat's case, we haven't asked you about his new deal. How soon after you got here did you identify him as someone you want to long term with? He's the guy you get off, like you look at guys and you're like, that guy can ball, right? And then you get around practice with him and everything like that. And you see what type of person, what type of leader, and what type of player he is. So right away, I, he passed the look test right away, right? You guys see that. And then, uh, and then just every day at practice, you know, showing us who he was day in, day out at practice has helped us as well.